Ah, the wig nut. I can't remember where I got the idea for the wig nut. It's just one of those things. Um, many of those people, uh, as I've said before, that participate at the meal have the challenge of mental health. Uh, that being said, uh, sometimes they refer to each other as sometimes kidding, sometimes in a more serious way, uh, one to the other, the other to the one, as just a bunch of wing nuts. Oh, or you wing nut, that sort of thing. So much so that the breakfast that is put on, the Sunday breakfast put on by the two different worker houses, is known as the wing nut or the wing nut breakfast. Um, and then there are those of us that come out on a somewhat continuous basis and want to make a big difference. Uh, and we're out there on a continuous basis rather than just hit and miss. And to be honest, for us to do it on a regular basis and to do this kind of work, we've got to be a little bit off our rocker too. Most people ask us, well, why do you want to do this? So perhaps we're just a bit loose or crazy as, as well, which is to say anybody can be a wingnut. So I wear my wingnut. Another reason I wear it is if I wear it as opposed to a crucifix or a Star of David or some other symbol of faith or, or specialness um, embedded with jewels or gold or silver, what it may be, it would set me as, uh, aside, set me off to the side from, from other people and make me special. Um, for a buck fifty-eight down at Ace Harbor, I can buy a wing nut. And it makes me approachable. People would come up to me if I was wearing something special or I had a badge or some sort of special identification. They might be a bit intimidated, but anybody wearing a wing nut is definitely approachable. Well, some of the jobs are obviously it's food prep. And the other part is food service. Uh, we also run a shelter in conjunction with Dorothy Day House, so we need volunteers to help. Uh, it's just sort of monitor things, so when things start to sort of go a little, get a little bit out of hand, we have somebody there to say, well, let's let's calm down, let's just try to work this out. And we're working with a difficult population, but uh, if you go in and respect them, they'll respect you when things work much easier. So I guess there's a certain amount of respect involved. Uh, what was your question again? Uh, well, what would a volunteer be doing? Uh, mainly food ser food service, working in the shelter, um, hopping in the van, going with me down to uh, uh, to the food bank, down to the restaurant supply, picking up foods, uh, bringing it back here, uh, breaking it out of boxes and putting it on the shelves, uh, throwing out stuff that's perhaps a little on the old side. Uh, I don't get my car wash as a, as a side benefit. Uh, so uh, pot washing and in the evenings during the winter we go out three nights a week this is where we started we started coming out at night there by our name night on the streets um, every Monday Wednesday and Friday from basically Thanksgiving through Easter we come out from about seven to about nine ish or so bringing out at this point soup hot chocolate some sort of an extra goodie whether it's candy or it's a, a Luna bar or a cliff bar or so we have this uh, this fabulous uh, family out in uh, Moraga that makes uh, these horrendous amount of cookies, uh, homemade cookies, so much that it's actually become a ministry of their own, which they call Cookies with Compassion. What it is is a little bag of cookies that they make homemade, and then they attach to it some sort of a note, some sort of a reinforcing note, God loves you, or uh, you are loved. Um, something, not necessarily provocative, but something supportive, uh, moving towards more than just a cookie. In other words, they're named Cookies with Compassion. So they make up big batches of these and we take those out. People love the homemade cookies over basically any other sweet that we come out, even chocolate bars. Maybe not chocolate bars, but runs a close second, if not. Um, so coming out at night, uh, the, doing the, uh, the street feed at night, doing this night on the streets part of the, uh, of the effort, uh, it's a little bit different because we go out when it's cold in the winter. We don't do it year-round. We do it when it's raining, and from time to time, people, when it's raining, they will call say, I can't make it, and I understand what I can't make it means. It means I don't want to work in the rain. We'll hop out of the car, oh, 15, 20 times on any given night when we're going out. We'll swing around the back of the van, lift up the lid, which works like a little roof, and we'll dispense hot chocolate and blankets and ponchos, sleeping bags, whatever we have that night. Uh, and we'll do it while it's raining or when it's very cold, when it's blowing. Um, nothing quite 
describes the feeling when somebody is cold and wet and you've got a poncho to hand them and they know they're going to be able to beat some of the rain back that evening. Hopefully they're not too wet already. But they get that poncho and, you know, we know we, we did something good that evening. Um, if the great man from upstairs were to come down and show up at one of our uh, evening uh, soup nights and we would be driving along and he'd wave us over and said, hey, can I, uh, can I have some soup? And I'd say, yeah. Um, I'd probably get him to wait in line behind two or three other people, not knowing he is who he is, and treat him the same as everybody. Treat him with dignity. And then he'd, uh, here I am. And I'd go, oh, gee. I would have put him up to the front of the line. But in any case, so how's it going, Jesus? Um, and I'm not quite sure what he'd say. This is all sort of guessing. But he'd say, you did a great job. Uh, I like your hot chocolate, in which everybody says that. Um, and I guess you would say something encouraging, like keep up the good work because there's, there's so much to be done. We have met him out there for 11, going on 12 years now. Because, he, because it is my belief that he is out there with us as well as he is within each one of those people that we feed something we don't necessarily think about. There is that spark of divinity within all of us, something that we greatly ignore. Sometimes that spark is a flame, sometimes it's a raging fire, but sometimes we greatly ignore it and we don't realize that there is the spark of divinity. There is Christ within every one of those folks out there. So the fact that it's maybe not Christ with the white flowing robes and the beaming light and the radiance that we bump into it. It's just something perhaps another step or two or three below that. Uh, we try not to lose sight. So it gives us a chance to reach out and, and shake hands with God.